start with prayer. Who would like to lead off with prayer today? Ed? I can do it. Okay. Oh, dear Lord, thank you for bringing us all together. Thank you for making us safe. And those people that have our ills and, and joints hurting and not feeling well, God, put your hand on them and give them strength and, and every day make it stronger and stronger. Now, Lord, thank you very much. And put your hand on Catherine. Let this um, talk and the book signing go well. In the Lord's name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you, Jesus. And thank you, thank you so much for coming out. I understand it's raining now. <laughs> Good old Michigan. One minute could be sunny, and next minute it's raining or snowing. Thank the praise the Lord. It's the rain, though, right? <laughs> so, um, I'm going to start off with saying that, uh, beginning with the Love Sun and Sunrise, I always want to look up there because that's where I would kept looking in the first place. But is but the sun starts off with, but the path of the just is like the shining sun. The shines ever brighter unto a perfect day, Proverbs 4.18. And you're going to see how that can work when we are facing catastrophic problems. And even if we're facing the Antichrist reign, how we can have total peace no matter what happens in our lives. Let me see. Now i got to find. Yes, it is. Now, this is all new to me right here. Oh, good. It works. <laughs> Okay, Love's Final Sunrise is a futuristic suspense wrapped around an intriguing romance. Can everybody hear me fine? Yeah. Oh, good. All right. My heroine and hero meet upon the brink of an EMP attack. Okay, they didn't know this was an EMP attack at the time. So, let's see what it sounds like. Isn't that, about, isn't that just the way it is about life? For instance, we didn't know we were in the midst of no, no power in Oxford yesterday. All of a sudden, there was no lights, no nothing, and everything closed down, even Kroger's. <laughs> All right. This, ha this begins when Ruth is on a, on a hunt club with her, her, um, her hunt group. You know, they're in Amish land. First time they've ever been there. And it's a really, truly different experience for them. Well, her ha grandmother has just died. And for some reason, she keeps these reoccurring nightmares that just wake her up in, in cold sweats. So she decides, well, I'll just go outside and I'll just get my horse saddle and I'll be ready for the hunt in the morning. It's all go, pa it all pass, right? Well, it didn't work out so well because she gets in this fog and she gets lost. Like a painter would his canvas, her eyes covered the landscape. Dark and light shadows swept the cultivated fields, which were flat as a pancake. Deep irrigation ditches gapped open on either side of the narrow road like graves awaiting a corpse. She recalled Grant's casket being lowered into the ground. The steel shoes of her horse grated on the gravel like the promises Ruth had made and never kept. A flash of lightning crossed over her, and a roar of greens, yellows, and pinks illuminated the sky like the Catskills of New York. They floated there for what seemed a timeless moment. Spotting an enclosed carriage about a half a mile ahead, she urged her mare into a clipping trot. He might know where the Johansson's farmhouse is. She fixed her eyes in the black box on wheels with a solitary reflector. The few people she met in Owasson were strange, even stranger than midnights in Ohio. She learned from Mr. Johansson, the owner of the bed and breakfast she was staying at, that the Amish Ordnon was strictly adhered to the old order. That meant they lived like the ancestors of the 1800s. It was like being in an hourglass frozen in time with no cars, electricity, or indoor plumbing. Johansson explained, our lifestyle keeps us from the temptations of worldly views of the 21st century. Neat trick if it worked. The swinging yellow beams of the two lanterns head of her bought, brought her back to the urgency of finding the Johansson farmhouse. Reaching the enclosed carriage, she leaned forward on her horse. Hello? Whoa, the man said. The large standard bed stomped his foot impatiently. Does Michigan usually experience these type of auroras? Is that what this is? Yes, I've seen them in New York, but never brought on with a road of lightning. She rested back in her saddle. Ah, uh, do you happen to know where the fastest way to the Johansson's farm is? Follow this road until it bends to the left, then turn right on Peck. It will take you there. Your curiosity got the better of her. Say, how do you people get to new news without a radio or television? The man poked his head around the corner of his carriage, his well-tanned face constricted into tiny laugh lines like a cork on a wine bottle. We rely on you English. A chuckle escaped through the clip, clip he bestowed on his horse. Giddy up. The horse's shod hooves 
resonated a rhythmic beat, pounding a fast-paced clip, as hurried as a man's attitude. Ruth reined up her horse, not very sociable. Well, what did I expect, asking for a polite conversation with a guy driving a mere image of a century-old hearse? She urged her horse into a canter. Now, just a few minutes later, she gets herself in trouble. She finds out that um, he has a gravel train that comes down, and that evidently he didn't know anything about horses. So he starts spewing gravel everywhere. Her horse, is, her horse rears up, and um, she totally loses control. She goes tearing down the, the, the ditch just in time, you know, before she gets off. But, but Joshua suddenly appears in a moment in an instant. So she, he saves her from this. And then, while she's trying to collect herself again, he asks her a question that, keeps, that really makes her think twice. Uh, I wish I could find my marker. <laughs> uh, how many of you have read this book so far? Just a show of hands. Oh, wow, fantastic. So I'm glad to see you're here. So you're definitely, you must have liked the book, right? <laughs> Great. So I'm glad to see you come back. Um, let's see. Oh, here it is. So anyways, we get, they get into a conversation. And he tells her something that she didn't really think would ever, she would ever hear. I was raised Amish. This is from Joshua. I left when I turned 18. So you liked to run away too. He crossed his arms and studied her. I didn't run away. I had questions. I needed to be asked. Besides, I needed to decide the Amish lifestyle was true to my calling. I returned to help my mother when my dot died. I didn't see the need to leave. I'm 33. You, I figure, what, what, 25? 28. And I'm not sure I understand. You're calling what? You'll find it in here. He tapped his chest, then summed up his, ass, uh, summed up, uh, his assessment of her in just six words. What are you afraid of to confront? Me? She avoided his look. She was 14 when a hit-and-run driver killed her mother. On her 15th birthday, her father remarried a divorced woman with two children and a 14-year-old girl and an 11-year-old boy. So began Ruth's habit of running away when life didn't suit her. Could be you're running away from your calling. You can't hide from God or his son. He will keep pricking your conscience until you admit you have a need. A bullfrog croaked not more than two inches from her boots. She jumped. That frog won't bother you. Yeah, you know this. So what has you upset? Me asking about your calling? We all have one, you know. It's our destiny, our reason to be born. He, she attempted an amused laugh. It came out like a pathetic awful. Calling, yeah, right. My grandmother often said, the earth is our battlegrounds. The life hereafter is where our eternal home awaits. And the Holy Bible is our roadmap to get us there. Why did I say that? Yeah, this is true. Where is your grandmother now? dead. A hit-and-run driver rammed her car with her buggy, supposedly straight to the center of the road. They think she might have had a heart attack. She pinched her eyes shut, blocking the picture of Grand's funeral last Sunday and the words she overheard a woman say to another, Mother Ruth died of a broken heart. So we kind of get the picture of what's going on in her, lot, in her, in her thoughts, in her life. Um, let's go on now. Okay, we're going to speed through the Amish history a little bit, and I'm going to get right to the point. <laughs> so we'll have one more time to talk at the end. All right. There was, we know the Catholic Church did a lot of good deeds. In fact, the earlier Catholics, the bishops, Unifus and them, what they did was, and, and spreading the word of God was wonderful. In fact, they managed to send out the word of God to even the heathens, especially the, the Vikings of old that were taught to, were, that were just totally pagans. They would slice a person in two if they didn't suit them. In fact, here's a picture of the Vikings right here. I did a book on, uh, I got a story on them. You can pass that around. Sure. Um, that's Eric the Red, and he was known for his fiery temper. His son did convert to Christianity. And then uh, that he was the one, in fact, that founded that that was the first one to America. 
they found they found out that he was even before Christopher Columbus. That's in that article, blog article if you wanted to read that sometime. So as you can see, Love's Final Sunrise is not a feel-good novel. It's a feel-encouraged novel. Um, as we said, we already said we got a few people here that read it before, and so I'm happy to see you here. <laughs> um, I wrote this story to encourage a wide audience, both ladies and gentlemen, and I, even for the teenagers, to guide them in their dating fields, for the person who needs to know, who, you know why they were born and what is their destiny exactly, we found out from Ruth. The Catholic Church, um, as it went along, was instrumental in spreading the word of God. Their monks, bishops, and priests faced death daily for their beliefs. But what happened to the falling away from the Catholic Church and the different denominations which followed? And what caused the Mennonites and Amish to form their different faiths? It all began with these monks, and Martin Luther began the first movement that spread around throughout the hemisphere. Oh, wait, I'm sorry, I went back the wrong way. There it is. <laughs> all right, now this is, we pronounce, I pronounced my name Ulrich because my mother Americanized it. <laughs> but I guess Norman said the word Ulrich, something like that, because Ulrich came from Switzerland, not from Germany. My dad came from Germany. Wouldn't dad be excited to know, my father, that he, that he was part of the Reformation movement? <laughs> he, he was a staunch Catholic. <laughs> Anyway, um, they, uh, Ulrich accepted the supreme authority of the scriptures, and by the year of 1523, he and his followers were baptizing converts in the rivers. A conflict broke up in 1524, known as the Peasant War, and spread across central Germany. By the January of 1525, legal requirements for infant baptism established fines and tortures for failing to do so. The state church, which at that time was a Catholic church, needed baptism to keep control over the populace by recording the names they were baptized. Ulrich, Ulrich's group rebaptized their followers in secret. That is how the group got their name An Anabaptist, really a derogatory term meaning rebaptizer. This must have started the, ba the, the Baptists we know of today too, you know, a lot of them. Um, then, I keep going the wrong way, I'm turned around. <laughs> Memo Simons, it was a Roman Catholic priest, and he ministered to his flock during that time. He became involved again in 1536 and converted to Anabaptist. And he was immediately excommunicated from the church. Now, Simons was a pacifist. He began the Mennonite faith, along with the idea of adult baptism. This new group started to be non-resistance, which would keep them from serving in state militaries and militias. They didn't believe in secular laws and oaths and did believe in social shunning for excommunicating members. Now, Joshua, um, as I said before, we talked before in here, he was an Amish, and he came, he left for 10 years, and he came back. He could do that because he never accepted, through water baptism, the Amish faith. If he had, according to this Amish community, he would have been shunned. You could not have come back. Um, I, had, I did another article on this, if I can dig it out. <laughs> um, anyways, uh, I'm all about this Amish history in my blog on the 16th of January and February. Well, the state church saw these Mennonites as a threat to both Protestants and Catholic authorities, and a threat to the security of their state, should war even erupt. So persecution began by drowning and spread to more torturous means, like one man was even killed on the wheel. They called it the wheel. They would kill, they would break every bone, you know, and then finally he would die. Uh, ironically, the Anabaptists had no acceptance of doctrine, no overall leader, no Lutheran-like figure. Some fled to Netherlands, where Simon lived, some towards South Germany, near Swabin Mountains. Okay, now I got this. Here, okay, here we meet Jacob Adaman. Now, this man is well known in the Amish community. Take a look at his clothes. Because that's the way the Amish of today still dress. This is the 1500s. This is the, what, the, the 21st century. <clears throat> uh, Jacob lived in the Swabian Mountains. Jacob converted to Anabaptists, then to the Mennonite faith. He was an elder of the church, and as the years progressed, 
He knows subdued changes that led to the founding of Amish faith. And that's when the parting came. Jacob proved to be correct. Many Mennonites began to embrace the outside world. Most Mennonites of day can, will use motorized vehicles, electricity, and telephones in their homes. And a few Mennonite communities do adhere to the code of their ancestors, which my Amish friend call horse buggy Mennonites. <laughs> I mean, some of, the, some of the things they come up with is amazing, honestly. Um, this is how Ruth's grandmother lived. However, Ruth wanted no part of this lifestyle. She left and went on to college, met a party guy, embracing the fast, secular life. Until her accident, her life suddenly changed, and then she searched for fruit, came to fruition, and so did Joshua's in Love's Final Sunrise. I hope to show, I was really, uh, I, read a, I wrote it for, like I said, adults and for teenagers, because... You know, teenagers have a tough, a tough role to follow in this world, in this culture, because they're looking and seeking love in all the wrong directions. You know, and sometimes you just need a little uh, push in the right direction. This is what God did with Ruth. Ruth was seeking the wrong side, and suddenly she was thrust into this environment and learned the truth about the Lord. Um, uh, let's see. I'll do one more reading here. Oh. Hmm. Martha hugged her son close. Yeah, her preparation for God's kingdom cannot be borrowed, not even for your own children. Raised in a godly home can, can hear it in salvation. They must ask for it and accept it on their own. What is going to happen next? We must be the light God has called us to be. The good book warns us to beware of false prophets. Many will betray one another and lawlessness will abound. It says so in... How will I know which Englisher I can trust and which I cannot? Joshua shrugged. I do not, but God does. He will show me. Meanwhile, we must make provisions to go the distance and be like the first, and be like the five wide, wise virgins in case of the bridegroom's delay. Jesus is worth the wait. He picked up his coat. I feel my calling is to help God's elect not to be deceived in these latter days. Yeah. God is planning to shorten the days for his elect during these trying times. Some English don't know what the inside of the Bible looks like. That is sad, son. Yeah, our Lord cares about his flock. He shrugged on his coat and hat. Only God knew what he was up against. With his hand in the door handle, he said, I must do what I have to to help them not lose heart and not take the mark of the Antichrist. Can I come, please? Ruth said. He hesitated, feeling the cool metal doorknob beneath his fingertips. Was it wrong of him not to want to protect her from the world she ran from? Ruth, we could be entering the devil's playground tonight, so beware. She just came back. She just came from that, tell you the truth. So <laughs> that's amazing. Anyway, so now we're going to go on to know how do the Amish get their information. The Blackbird Bulletin. Blackboard. And then this, can you read that? The what it says on here? A humble a humble talent uh, that is used is worth more than a talent of a genius who is idle. This is the kind of stuff they get from their papers. Uh, they also have the plain truth, which I buried in here someplace, that they send out a monthly paper, and I'll show it to you later. Um, that's full of full of wise sayings and, and instrumental to their lives. You know, they have different recipes in there, you know, different slogans and different ways of how to, to, fill, to do your crops, how to make them grow better. It's very interesting. This is all they have, by the way. They don't have radios. And amazingly, a dear friend of ours will be seeing his, no, I don't have, I got his picture someplace else in that book. He, um, he got in a buggy accident. And he was killed. His wife was thrown from the buggy. The horse was euthanized. And um, we went to his funeral. And I'm telling you, it was just amazing how everybody was there, almost to word of mouth. They have, uh, the old order Amish have their, to have their phones outside their homes, like the Mennonites don't have, because they can, that's out of laws. But they got through to everybody. Everybody was there. You know, and they had a big room. It was all <laughs> heated by a stove, a pot belly stove, you know. And it's just amazing. And then he had food ready for us. You know, we ate every day. You know, I mean, it was just amazing how quickly the community got together, pulled together, and got this job done. Even in such a such a a time like that. Um, let's see. Um, all right. 
Okay, here's our Amish friend of today. Does he look like he was back in the 1500s? <laughs> Even the kids. Notice the kids are probably barefoot. Yeah, they like that better than wearing shoes. They always put shoes on in the winter months. The Amish came to America around 1720 with the Mennonites to escape severe persecution from the Netherlands, Germany, and Switzerland. Nowhere else in the world today do large populations of Amish live but here in the United States. Inheriting from their fellow Americans freedom to live and worship as they choose. The Amish follow a strict code of ethics from their organon. The organon is a written set of rules and regulations that guide everyday Amish life. And each organon is a, is a German word that means discipline and order. Um, <clears throat> so I, do, we think, do you think we need a little more discipline and order in our lives? <laughs> Maybe our kids do, right? There, are, there was no head dignity as in the Roman Catholic Church, nor like the Lutheran Methodist or, or the other religions. Every community has their own set of rules that they follow. That's why shunning, which means banishment from the community, might be different from the Amish, com Amish from community to community. So uh, I was asking my, my, my friend, I says, well, how do you, what do you do? She says, everything's different. There's no one telling me what to do. No, or, I can't believe that all these years, it, the Amish has still survived through this time. You know, there's no meeting. They meet every other Sunday at everybody's at different homes. You know, and I went to Kentucky, same thing there. Um, I went to, um, I went to Cass City. Uh, it was a little bit different there, but it was the same thing every other Sunday. And they just follow that all the way through. Yeah. Okay, this is like the 1700s. Now, <laughs> uh, this is Barbara. See her up in the corner there? She was the first... Amish person I ever interviewed. I was working for Mission Traveler magazine at the time, and I thought I want to get an Amish article for um, how, for Thanksgiving. That'd be perfect, you know. Well, I learned a lot from Barbara. This that machine over there is a potato picking machine or harvesting. I don't know how exactly it works, but it takes the potatoes out of the ground for them, you know. And um, Barbara, that's when I first heard the word English. I said, "Why well, you keep calling me English? I'm an American." <laughs> And she says, I'm American too. <laughs> and sure enough, they are. They actually um, well, came in here in the, in the 1700s, 1600s. So they probably beat my ancestors. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Can, can I ask you a question? Sure. She let you take her picture because some don't want their picture. They don't, on. not directly on. Yeah, okay. yeah, and the side and the back, they don't mind. I always say, because, okay, take your picture, and they, they, they say to the, to the side or to this, and I do it, but I don't always. And I've had people, actually, you'll see some pictures I've done, that they say, take our pictures. You know, I want to, they have an album of pictures, you know. And I'm surprised they even asked, because I was Michigan Traveler in L.A. View, but I, I honor their request. The ones that they knew these are going to go in the magazine, so those are okay. So that's the way they work. They're great. They don't, and they only, they're mirrors, um, this is the one I don't like. It's just they don't want to be vain, you know. So their mirrors are only small mirrors, you know. They never really see the full profile of themselves or anything like that. But they seem very content with their lives. You know, I have to say they're they're a very happy people. You'll see some more photos now. We're into the the day, the the group here. Oh, <laughs> all right. Um, see, they use. Um, See, I didn't read all this one here. Here you can find their children do not learn to speak English until they, they attend the Amish schools. Yes. Uh, I couldn't figure that out. At first, at time, until I found out this, I couldn't figure out why the kids, I thought they were, you know, something was wrong with them because they wouldn't reply if I asked them a question. They just looked, gave me this blank stare, you know. But they take my candy and everything, you know, and say it's donkey and that would be it. <laughs> But I found out they didn't understand a word I said. <laughs> in fact, in my book, which I did it really realistically, uh, in, the, in there when they do the preaching, they have an interpreter for the English if they happen to be there. But everything is spoken in their Swabish, which we're going to be learning about, more about Swabish right now. <laughs> oh, dear. It was funny. Oh, and I forgot to tell you, you see the ingenious way they do these things? They're harvesting their, their wheat, their, their straw, and their oats right now, looks like. 
And I'm telling you, they're doing a fantastic job of getting, the, getting that work done fast. They change their electric motors to gasoline engines, use old ringer washer machines, hang their clothes out to dry, even in the winter months, and they say they're softer. <laughs> uh, they get their ice from frozen lakes in the winter, store them in, in the insulator rooms, a lot like our ancestors did, and call them an ice house which I described that in Multa Dandelions. Also, this gentleman, he knew I was doing this from Michigan Traveler Magazine, and I said to him, um, how, does it how does it work, you know, because he's on there holding his horse, you know, standing up there like a big, sh you know, like a big shot. And I said, well, do you, was, do you like your, your wheels? Don't they grate a lot? And he says, well, you don't have to worry about a flat tire. <laughs> <laughs> they really have a sense of humor, I'll tell you. Their wood stoves are used for heating their homes, water, and cooking. And I have a picture of a wood stove that I'll pass around in a minute to you. That is really, they, they have their, their, their hot water for cooking, and they have their, 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 they have their, their heating, and they have their, everything they need right there in this, one, in this one little stove. And it really does produce a lot of heat. Basing their beliefs on the New Testament, the Amish have persevered throughout the years for progress, change, and moral values. Their testimonies are really their families. They work together all the time, and you don't hear anyone complaining about getting out and working. Um, believe me, those kids work. Uh, in fact, <laughs> I guess they don't always do their chores. Like, I mean, they do, we do stalls daily, but a lot of people do stalls, you know, monthly or whatever. And I guess um, one of my Amish friends told me that they told her son, you get all those stalls done this time. I want them cleaned out immediately. And the guy said, they took out by wheelbarrows. He said, oh, my gosh, you can't believe I took out 20 loads. <laughs> I'm beat. <laughs> they were like, oh, my goodness. But they did it. They obeyed. <laughs> uh, okay. This little gal here, she was amazing. They do, they do all the milking, doing the butter, do the, all the cooking, doing the canning. Um, they harvest their own, they have little crop, they have little, um, crops, you know, side crops that they put all their, their can, all their stuff in, produce in, and the, usually the men and women, usually the women and the children harvest those, you know, and can them all up. I think that stool has got to be a hundred years old. You know, she's barefoot in that barn, you know, and I thought, I just can't get used to that, you know, but they don't think anything of it. <laughs> so I decided to give it a try. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, it wasn't as easy you might think, tell you the truth, you know. It took me a couple, of quite a little bit of a while to try to get it to come out and in the bucket and not squirting on me. <laughs> and the poor cow, it was awful considerate. It didn't hit me with its tail or nothing either, but it's a pulling and up, see, pull and pull, it pulls you down, you know, so it was just amazing. But once you get it, you remember it, because I went back to the Michigan, tra to, um, to the 4-H, and I did their cow, which is a little bit pl just plastic, but I managed to get the milk out. <laughs> oh, mercy me. That was fun. And I also, I'll show you this in a minute. Okay, also, here is my guy. This is Malibu, my halflinger stallion. I did this article, article for the LA View, and um, he was so amazing. He pulls a plow, which I have that in here, too, and he also um, pulls a cart, and I drove him. You see down there at the lower picture with him all, all hooked up? Yeah, that I was dry. I drove him down the road in a couple places and back. He was so congenial, though. And I have to say, nothing has rubber wheels. So you hear the grating, grating, grating of the gravel as you go down the road. And um, it sways back and forth. It's really a different feeling than you ever felt before, you know, because it's in a box, you know? Yeah. Well, I noticed in your book, uh it veered from the Left Behind series quite a bit. The Left Behind series was a, a, a rapture, a pre-trib rapture, before any of the seven-year thing. And I noticed you are, are kind of sticking with, uh, um, I, would, I call it Revelation 14, uh, the harvest of the earth, mm -hmm. and mid-trib. So I'm, I'm guessing that the reason you did so much with this Amish was to show us who never, who think we can't live without the mark. Uh, <laughs> yes. That we would be able to live without the mark. Yep. And I mean, even the Amish could show us how, because, I mean, I can't see myself ever thinking this is any way to live, but I guess if it's the only way you can live without the yeah. world, then we can do it. It can be done. 
Exactly. So, because a lot of people won't, won't accept that uh, a mid-trib rapture or even a post-trib or whatever, because there are different thoughts on that. And it's hard, hard to determine from, mm -hmm. from the Bible uh, exactly when the Lord will come. But uh, I think that uh, this at least makes them realize that life isn't over just because, oh, no. Right. <laughs> there wasn't. <laughs> right. What is this stuff going yeah, on? Yeah, yeah. So I'm supposed to be gone now. You know? Yeah, it's yeah. Not. So I think that this kind of is encouraging to Christians, mm -hmm. even those of us who want to believe in a pre-trib rapture. I just would I hope that's right. But <laughs> I'm not, when I read my Bible, I don't quite see it that way. I kind of see it more like you did. It's, it's a yeah. of the harvest of the earth. Really, when you read the Bible just as it's written without someone else telling you how you have to go back <laughs> here or back there or do this, flip-flop and all that, yeah. that's when it seems to happen. Yeah, There's yeah. In 14, there he is with the clouds, the trumpet, okay, before the bowl's wrapped. I mean, that seems that's it. I know. Obvious unless, until someone starts explaining it some other way. So I'm thinking all this Amish stuff is to me was like, oh my goodness, there's no way. Yeah. I think about living like that. They're just not going to happen. <laughs> if I'm left behind, I can see. You know, yeah. Okay, I can see that. I can I, wait. I can hold out for three and a half years. <laughs> I know. Amen. <laughs> and and plus, and God shortened those days. <laughs> And, and listen to this, you know, he shortened the days. And I, one of my, my Amish friends says to me, it's like a funnel. Widen the bottom, it gets narrow, narrow, narrow. We're getting narrow, narrow all the time. I wonder, really, I wonder if that's one of the reasons they stayed the way they were through these years, thinking it's going to be like this. You know, I don't know. Who knows? But I know this much. They are very encouraging to me and to other, and other, and other people, knowing that you can get along. Your kids can survive. You know, they even bought my bunny rabbits. <laughs> I'll tell you the truth. They are definitely survivors. They, they know how to live, you know. And I went to Kentucky, and here this guy's got all these, bun all these rabbits. I said, you got all these rabbits? I said, they're the big ones. I said, she says, yeah, yeah. And he's got these deer in the back already, already cooped in. <laughs> I mean, this guy, I mean, they know how to live. They had their little ice box. It was small because they, live, they eat all fresh meat, you know. What can you say? And their their kids, they're like eight, ten kids. You know, they have so many children, you can't believe it. And they're all happy kids. We're going to be an honor. I'll show you some more of them. But it's just amazing. And I keep thinking to myself, maybe this is why God, he, I mean, this has been the hardest book I've done. The hardest. I mean, I started thinking about it in 2019, and I put the proposal out, and nobody wanted to even pick it up. But my, but Tross River did finally, and then at the end they didn't want to do it because this is too, this is too controversial, Kathy. This is too much. You know, no one's going to want that. Says they're going to love this book. They're going to need this book. I don't know what's coming on. God knows. But let's protect the elect because let's face it. Jesus wants to protect us. Satan wants us, and Jesus knows that, and that's why he's shortening those days to, to so the elect will get through it. He's standing on the side and says, come on, people, you can do this. I'm, I'm cheering for you. You're going to make this. Don't worry about it. I'm here. And he's going to help us through it. Wait and see. Okay, here is Malibu. Malibu's been very busy. <laughs> no wonder he was passive when I was riding, driving him because way back there, there's more of his flock, you know. He was a very busy boy there. <laughs> and here we see the Amish kids. They are amazing. They usually ride bareback, and they sometimes, without bothering to bridle for their horses, they just jumped on for me, and I, they were taking, take my picture, take my picture. They were so adorable. And um, it's just amazing to see kids in action, having fun. And I thought, you know what, any kid, if they know, they, was, they don't even know what a cell phone, they don't know what a cell phone is. A computer, they don't know what they are. I, are they, are they don't, they don't, there's no hunger for cars and clothes. And, and these Amish communities are happy, you know. You know, don't get me wrong. I don't want to live like them unless I have to. <laughs> if I've got to stay with the Lord, I'll live like them, you know. <laughs> I can do this too, you know. That's just the way I look at it. Um, but, you know, what makes their teenagers' lives content, their, hap their children happy? Why all through life we've seen the Catholic Church change. We've seen changes in the Lutheran Church. We've seen changes in the Methodist Church. Why haven't they changed? Why are they stronger than ever before? Why it's like a funnel coming down to the center? Why do they know this is it? We're not worried about it because they have the little interpretation of the Bible. 
and no one maybe i thought that our our sermons were doing good but maybe we got to make sure read the bible you know that seems to be the most important part in this is know yourself the scriptures because satan he knows scriptures we have to know them better than him <laughs> um webster's definition of pagan is one who has little or no religion and who delights in sensual pleasures and material goods gee <laughs> Does that remind you of anybody? <laughs> you know, our society is pretty close to that. Especially when you see the Antifa people running all over the place, you know. No drugs, no abortion or alcohol here. Judith had gone through all of it. And I made her as bad as I could make her. <laughs> and in the end, what life did she choose? Ruth meets her ex-boyfriend. He wants her back. He tells her he'll, he's changed. <clears throat> so let's see what she says here. Excuse me, I'm getting parched. <laughs> Oops, wrong one. <clears throat> now, it seems like, yep, her boyfriend has really listened, has read a couple of pages out of the Bible because he starts quoting the Bible to her, just like Satan did to Jesus during the 40, the 40, the 40 days, like we're going through right now, before Easter. There, you must forgive me. If you don't forgive me, those who trespass against you, he won't forgive you your trespasses. I do forgive you. Then prove it by marrying me. Take the mark. She struggled in his grasp. No, never. Let go of me. His arms held her firmly. Then you haven't forgiven me. You can always ask God's forgiveness this way. You'll prove you have forgiven me, and your God promises to forgive you 70 times 7. It was written, to him who knows to do good and does not do it, to him it is sin. A sneaky smile covered his distress. My God killed your Jewish prophet on the cross. Well, my God designed a plan to help his creation after your God, the devil, attempted to have us banished from our creator, the one true God. He shall bruise your head and you shall bruise his heel. For as in Adam all died, even so in Christ all shall be made alive. Don't say that name. He blocked his ears for a moment, then lowered his hands. My God sent fire down from heaven, and he made a statue speak. Apostle Paul warned us of this very thing over a thousand years before in Revelations. He wrote to the Christians all about the false prophet and the Antichrist, who would show great signs to deceive, if possible, the elect. An animal growl erupted deep in Rex's throat. His mouth moved, but he couldn't speak. When he did, it was with a different voice not his own. You were mine before you were his. I can give you fine food, silks and jewels. Worship me. I am a child of the Most High God, and his son Jesus redeemed me through the blood of his, of his shed on the cross of Calvary. His face turned fiery red. His eyes burned into hers. Don't say that name around me, ever. Do you hear me? My government forbids this. It is written, render unto Caesar what is Caesar's, therefore to all their due. Customs to whom customs, fear to whom fear, honor to whom honor. It's also written, you ought to obey God rather than man. The God of our fathers raised up Jesus. Huh. So my little coward, you long, no longer want to run away. Because I have found a cause to believe in, a reason for why I was born, and someone who loves me for who I am. So that gives you an idea. You know, and I'm hoping we can get more young kids to read this story before before they're swelled in to the secularism which they're in now with all this computer and, and phones and everything that they've got. I mean, you, I can't reach them, but you can. We have to do it each, each our own way. That's all I can say. Um, uh, let's see, where's we got now? Oh, oh, this is the other one. <laughs> um, their faith, family, and hard work and community support have weathered the the generations of change, and I think that's what held it. I think they're held in their belief in Jesus Christ and keeping away from, you know, we think we can handle temptations. Maybe we can't not handle temptations, you know what I'm saying? We think we're indispensable. Without Christ, we're not, you know? Without Jesus Christ and knowing the Word of God, we are totally vulnerable. Um, this is the one that has. You Can you read that okay? Yep. Okay, let's go on then. Now, this one here, Kirk Cameron said, um, left behind said, what does it matter what we think we know? In the end, 
there is no denying the truth. And that's what I think is going to happen. We don't know how God's going to end. We don't know what exactly is going to happen because not even Jews all accepted Jesus Christ's birth. All we can say is, Jesus, we'll figure it out when you come. <laughs> you know, amen. We'll know that when he returns. And and that's one. But he said, from the east to the west, you'll see my coming. So there's no other way. We don't have to worry about it. No one can change us. No one can confuse us. Even if people say, well, he's coming now, or he's coming then. As I didn't read all the book. You have to get the book to read it all to see what this story is about. But believe me, it's potent, as, as what my readers tell me about it. Um, that's what I said that night, night people eight. Okay, I want to tell you something else, too. The most important thing is this. Make sure you read the author's page at the end, because it's going to tell you that I don't care to know if you, if, what, which way you believe. What I do want you to know, though, is that we have to tell our loved ones and friends in order to enjoy the fullness of life, a personal relationship with G Christ Jesus as a must, as J Jesus told Nicodemus 3.3. 3. Most assuredly, I say to you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Being born again, knowing their name is written in the Lamb's book of life. He constantly mentions this, the Lamb's book of life is eternal, which God reaffirms in Revelation 3, 5. He who overcomes shall be clothed in white garments, and I will not blot out his name from the book of life. I will confess his name before my Father and before his angels. Christians are the watchmen of America. We have freedoms that other countries do not share, as shown by the Amish. They came here with no other place to go. They found America's shores. So let's not let the rest of this country, rest of the world down. So you read the rest of it. I don't want to bore you with more reading. <laughs> there I go. There. And then this one, and I've got other books. In fact, Swept Into Destiny is a fantastic book to have for somebody who knows it's Amish. Uh, they, uh, it's, it's called, it's really great. I can read a few excerpts out of that, but I don't know. What time is it? Oh, we did a good time. So check that one out too. There, there's another one. Oh, I have a few more. I want to pass these around of some, I, I, you know, I am totally blessed by my readers. Totally blessed. Because without them, I don't know how I would survive. Because when you put a book like this out, immediately Satan is there to tear you down. <laughs> You know, it's just amazing how he will, you know, you'll probably, you'll try not to be self-doubting. You'll try not to be, you know, be strong in the Lord. But we live in a secular world. It's very hard to do that. Um, one person wrote, wow, truly captivating. I couldn't put it down. Catherine does a heroic and award-winning job of placing fictional characters in a present and future world where biblical prophecies are rapidly being fulfilled. Better than Left Behind series. I read it in two days and I say, come Lord Jesus, I long for your appearing. <laughs> and then another one, um, and I'm telling you, she was, she was a great, she's a great lady, and she was my Catholic friend, and she prayed the rosary, believed in Mary, and to pray for, she had to pray to the saints before she could pray to Jesus, you know, so she writes, Love's Final Sunrise is a fantastic story with twists and turns. The Bible quotes in front of every chapter was inspirational. This book is a true spirit of a constant praise of the Lord. However, it's also a reminder of all re to all readers of faith of the second coming of Christ. Everyone should hasten to prepare themselves. Could the second coming of Jesus Christ possibly be sooner than we think? Wishing you more inspiration and courage to keep writing such beautiful stories. Thank you. <laughs> Any questions? You know, I read, I read this book quite, uh, oh, yeah, quite a while ago. Uh -huh. So, you know, obviously I try to remember details of it. So knowing I was going to come here tonight, this morning I started, you know, I got it out and I started some of the, some of the stuff you just read, yeah. I just re read. But then I uh, actually got caught up again because I don't read very fast. I'll read them. It'll take me a month to read the book. And when I first read it, you know, it's like 10 days and I was through it. <laughs> but I found myself doing that again this morning, I especially the end, you know, last three chapters to wrap up. Yeah. And, oh, yeah, I remember now. Yeah, yeah. It's, yeah. it's a very, very exciting and very uh, keeps your attention. Oh, I'm so glad. I, I, I wrote it like this for a reason, too. Um, I'm, I'm like you. I did a lot of studying, a lot of late, reading a lot of people, biblical things about the rapture and everything else. I thought, Lord, this is totally confusing. And I prayed, and he'd wake me up at night and give me Bible scriptures. And I thought, okay, I know. And I suddenly I had a, a full map of what he wanted me to do. And that was to start off with the three and a half years and go all the way through and put the Bible verses in the front 
and put the rapture how it actually happened. And it worked. It's amazing. It all fell back like a puzzle. It was all a beautiful work of art. And he said, he said, uh, Matthew 24, 22, these will be perilous times, you know, and not everyone will survive. But for the elect's sake, because of the elect, I will shorten those days because of you, you know. And he said, but be, be careful. There'll be deceivers throughout, throughout trying to deceive even the elect. Because, see, I hate to say this, but if you're not a Christian, if you accepted Jesus Christ in your heart, you're not part of his elect. And sad to say, you are in Satan's realm. And when he comes, he's going to snatch you up before you can even think about spelling the world word. It's going to be too late. You've got to know it now. You've got to grab your kids now. They've got to accept Jesus Christ and know the word enough to know he's wrong. Jesus is right. Let's go for it. You know, all Ruth had was her mother. She couldn't let go of her mother's Bible teachings. That's something else to think about. It was her grandmother. Because of her grandmother's teachings, what her dad said about atheism didn't go hold true. She still had that word of God in her heart, and she couldn't let go of it. And that's what kept her fixed. That kept, that's what brought the Satan Lord back to her. So that's something to think about. So don't give up. Don't give up. Those things you do for your kids, don't give up. They all come to fruition in the end. There. Thank you so much. <laughs>